I'm Peter Jones, editor at County Deer Stalking, the online magazine for deer stalkers. We're in Wales and I'm joined by Andrew Venables from WMS Firearms Training. And today we're aiming to help show you how to shoot more accurately from four basic shooting positions, standing, kneeling, sitting and prone. So I'm here with Andrew Venables Hi. and we're here to talk about shooting positions. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to discuss shooting sticks and, and shooting from a standing position. Now, we're both armed with different types of uh, shooting sticks. I've got what we call the quad pod, and you've got a pair of uh, split sticks. Yeah. So, first of all, we're going to start talking about the quad pod. Now, this is possibly one of the most stable platforms, and the way we use it is like this. First of all, say we've spied our deer. Now, up here, we've got at about 100 yards, we've got some life-size deer targets made out of steel. So what we're going to do is we're going to see our spot our target, I'm going to split the sticks and allow the front leg to drop forward. All I'm going to do then is one smooth movement, I'm going to take my rifle off the shoulder and onto the pod. Now look where I've placed it. The front stick here is on the stock, it's not on the barrel or on the moderator. And the reason for that is full bore rifles, <coughs> the, the barrels are free floating. And if we stop that barrel from being free floating, we affect the accuracy of the rifle. So we always put it on the front stock. So that's our front stick. And on the rear stick here, the other point of contact is on the butt, just by the sling swivel. Now what we do then is we acquire our target, we fit ourselves to the rifle. Now a little trick here, look at my left leg. It's right up against the stick here, okay? And that helps add stability. It's resting against my knee and possibly against my chest there if you need to, all right? And we're gonna fit ourselves to the rifle. Your front hand comes round onto the stock, but it's also controlling the sticks as well, all right? So that way, if you need to move the rifle a little from left to right on the front platform you can. So we acquire our target, fit ourselves, and do you see where my trigger finger is? We're on our target. Okay now just one a couple of points here because it's all very well talking about a stationary target but as anyone will know deer can move. If it moves away or towards us we have great vertical movement with the quad pod. What we don't have so, so quite so good is the is the horizontal movement so that's solved by one of two things and the first here on this design of quad pod we have a platform here of about 10 centimeters and that allows us to move the rifle from left to right should the animal move the other way is this when you're fitted to the rifle grasp the front and you can pivot off one leg or the other so say for example the deer has moved off to the left we can, pivoting on the right leg, we can move our sticks off to the left as we need to. Or if the animal's moved off to the right, then we do likewise, we move it round to the side. So let's come on to this target again. Nice wide stance, grip the front, front stick, against, sorry, the back stick against my knee, and we're coming onto the target. Now, I'm going to load one into the chamber and my safety catch is on. Again, finger well away from the trigger. Now, let's try a shot and if you hear a ping, then you know that I've struck the, the steel target. Yeah, well centred. Sorry, Andrew. Good shot, that's quite all right. So what we've done there as well is we've reloaded straight away. And that's in case we haven't dispatched our animal properly with the first shot, we're ready to take a second shot to dispatch it properly with the second. So that's the quad pod. That's typically how we might use it. I'm going to make my rifle safe and I'm going to hand you over to Andrew to demonstrate the split sticks. Andrew. Okay. Okay, the altogether simpler design of the split sticks, they're not as steady as the quad pod for sure. 
In terms of weight to carry, I don't think there's a lot of difference. It's all aluminium, good stuff. In terms of deployment, we need to get the sticks out at a reasonable height. And for most people, the sticks lining up with the shoulder will be reasonable height. Getting the rifle off the shoulder when you've actually had binoculars in your hand to start with, because spotting's normally like this. Oh, there's one. The binoculars need to go down slowly. The sticks need to go out slowly. Now we have to get the rifle. I normally lean the sticks backwards onto myself while I take full control of the rifle and bring it round onto the sticks, taking care not to rattle things. As Peter mentioned, I try to get the sling just in front of the contact point and it's best if you have the contact point at the front of the forend. Very simply, if the contact point is here, the rifle effectively will move more than if the contact point is there. You can see there's less movement side to side. Height-wise, I like to be standing pretty much upright. You often see people with sticks in these strange stress positions where you're waiting with lots of muscle tension. Not really a good idea. That's you could be here for 10 minutes waiting. You want to be stood. Weight down through your body. The sticks are just a little low for me here. Now there's two things I can do. Start messing about lengthening the sticks and the deer's going to run away. Or I can very simply widen my stance, which drops me down and also gives me even more rigidity here. Head position is important. Make sure it's in your shoulder. A lot of people come onto rifles as this with the head coming in from the side. I've got a sight picture now but my head can wobble on the stock. If you put the cleft of your chin on top of the stock and then bring your head down, you can see now I have a sight picture, good eye relief, but also full weld on the stock. And this enables things to be a lot more steady. Actually taking the shot, just making ready, understand your rifle, how much noise it'll make doing this. If it's a noisy rifle, do this before you get on the sticks. <laughs> Forwards and down. And the blaster, we set the spring. And what I do when I'm set up, and hoping there's time, I look at the animal over the top of the stick. Set your mind on the task at hand. Don't rush into it. Look at it over the top of the sticks. Settle down and decide on the moment. Okay, here we go. The breath in and out. Back onto it. If you need to fire again, you can do so. And back onto the reload again. I've often seen people fire on sticks and they make that all important first shot and then I'll just set, and then they go like that and they do the reload in that position. We've now lost the deer. Important. We might never find Absolutely it in the sight important. again. Very important to stay on. When you're ready for the shot, Settle down, make it, reload, and keep watching the animal through the scope, as Peter said. Don't take your eyes off it. On a good heart shot, it might run 30 or 40 metres. You can track it and follow it and be ready in case. When you're down off the sticks, set the safety, OK? Great. And then off to find the animal, uh, we hope. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some really good tips there from uh, dealing with split sticks and quad sticks and the standing position. What we're going to do now is we're going to move further forward and we're going to try kneeling. Okay. Okay, as we said before, here we are. We're coming up now to look at the sitting and the kneeling positions. There's the younger, more flexible member of the group. Peter's <laughs> well, going to be doing much. the kneeling position and demonstration of yoga and I'll get on with the sitting. <laughs> Basic sitting position you're better off with your butt a little higher than your feet, okay? We have a handy rock. So we'll just take up a basic position here. I've spent many happy hours in woods, sat underneath a tree, just waiting like this, watching for something to happen. When something happens, what you do next and the sequence is very important. 
you want both elbows and both your knees locked in together. We're getting that bone on bone contact all connected down to the ground for stability. The sling, don't leave it wobbling around underneath to get caught up or catch the wind. Just get it out of the way, wrap it round out of the way. Think of yourself as a gun turret and it's very important that the gun points naturally at the target. If I want to shoot at something just off at 45 degrees here, it's pretty good. I can get my elbows and my knees sorted out, come onto the target. If I need to move right or left, it's very important that I don't twist my position. What I need to do is just quietly bring my feet around and actually alter my position entirely because the rifle must point naturally at the target. Sure. If you force it on, it'll start to ping back as yep. you make the shot. So, back to the steel targets we've got laid out there. You need to be able to relax in the position, ensure that the elbows and knees are locked up. And when you're thinking of taking the shot, just take a moment, pause, look over the rifle, focus on the target or quarry at hand. We make ready for the shot. Remember what I said about chin on the stock, come down into a position where you have a good cheek weld. And when you breathe in, the sights should go down. And when you breathe out, they should come back up again. If you've got time, do these breathing exercises because they'll help calm you down. You could already have buck fever, which I'm proud to say I still suffer from occasionally. <laughs> We've considered, we're going for it. Firing. Reload, get back on the target. Check it's all okay. Follow the animal if you have to. If it's all okay, make safe and in a quick repetition if his mate appears back onto it take a moment reload and follow through with it and don't lose safety in the excitement when it's safe to move forwards and make safe keeping the rifle pointed in the safe direction decock it as with this blazer or reset the safety and in this case I'm going to empty it because obviously I haven't got a wounded deer to follow up. Peter, Great Andrew that's fantastic. You're Thank on you. for kneeling. Great so that's that's sitting I'm going to help show you some shooting from a kneeling position. Okay so kneeling Now the thing to think about here is contact points. The more contact points you can make, the more stable you'll be. So the first thing is your front knee. If we're taking a shot in front of us here, my elbow is on my knee here. Okay, we don't want to be in a position where this knee is high and this elbow is kept floating. It doesn't work for us. We want stability here. So let's turn that round front knee, front elbow, and we come down onto the other knee here. Now again, contact points. Now some this will depend very much how flexible you are. You can have your foot behind you here, and hold the rifle quite stable. However, ideally, if you're a little bit more flexible, try and think of having your whole leg here on the ground, and sit on your back foot knee in front of you, as Andrew said before, your elbow just on the inside of your knee. Now that offers a nice degree of stability. But when we're deer stalking, we're always looking for our most, pos the most stable possible shot. And the other thing we'll be doing as deer stalkers is carrying shooting sticks, almost invariably. So if we come back to the quad pod that I had earlier, Let's take a look at this and see how we can use these to aid our stability. What I suggest you do is you split the sticks like this, take a grasp of the front leg here. And all you're gonna do then is place the stock on your front hand. 
that really helps aid stability. So let's put that into practice and see how we get on. Reload, safety on. And we're on the target again. That way, if our animal has moved or we haven't dispatched it properly, we're ready for our second shot. So that's kneeling. Okay, so let's move on. Andrew's now gonna give us some top tips from, for shooting from a prone position. Okay, thanks very much, Peter. Interesting thing about prone position is that we all spend most of our lives practicing from prone or off shooting benches. And if I think of the deer I shoot, and Peter, you think of the deer you shoot, how many deer do you shoot from prone? Oh, Percentage? Majority from standing, to exactly. be honest. So practice this position. It's very handy when you need it, but don't forget to practice from the other positions as well. This is likely to give the most success if you do it right. I've been mentioning the cheek weld. Very important to actually address the rifle properly. The position needs to be as low as you can be. A lot of people just put the bipods out full length and end up up here and we don't really think about it. But this is much more wobbly in that position than actually going down as low as you can get. I want this hand to be as close to the ground as I can to give me an index onto the ground to steady the back end of the rifle. This hand's going to grip in there's no point in putting this hand up here, it's a waste of time. It can just be back here when you're using a bipod. This first demonstration is obviously with use of the bipod. Once again, because I don't shoot prone much when I'm hunting, most of my hunting rifles don't wear a bipod and I tend to use a sling or my rucksack or something. But here we are off a bipod for the first demo. Target over there, it's a 10 inch disc and it's 275 meters away. You're not going to do this from kneeling. You're unlikely to do it from sitting. For a shot like this, you have to be well grounded prone. Don't forget that. If the position isn't supportive enough, it won't work. You come onto the rifle, we'll just load it up ready for the shot and put the safety on. I need to steady myself down. If your ghillie has thoughtfully just marched you up a mile of one in four hill, before you get to the top, stop and sit down on the blind side. Don't stick your head over the top breathless, because in this position, being like this, <sighs> is obviously no help. This hand needs to be as grounded as we can be. We lock onto the target. For the purposes of this shot, I've actually dialed the scope for it. I'm just going to aim slightly to the right of centre for the wind. Breathe in. <sighs> Breathe out, settle down. Trigger to the for the finger, it's firing. Shot. Reload, stay on the target. Okay, you heard the clang, I've hit the 10 inch disc, but what the heck, let's go again. Firing. Good shot. And reload. Always the reload, okay? Now, frankly, we've done the 10 inch plate twice, it's dead. So I'm going to unload as if we're walking forwards. But remember, everything grounded, locked in, settled down, you can make a shot like that work. But I did mention before that actually I don't often have a bipod on my hunting rifle. <laughs> so in the next segment, we'll look into how we're going to use a sling or a shooting bag. Okay, Peter, let's move. Great, well done. Okay, so it's back to Andrew again. This time, we're gonna demonstrate shooting when prone, but only using the sling. Andrew. Okay, as I've mentioned before, very often in hunting, prone's the last position I'll use, so I may well not have a bipod, because a bipod actually can interfere with sticks. Sure. I'm sure you've discovered that one. This rifle has a sling I like to use, and it's a two-point sling, which you can use as a support. If I pull that part of the sling out, pop my arm into it, put it up on my shoulder, when I bring this hand round back in between, it tightens the sling around my arm 
and it's a useful support for the rifle. If I just load, and on this blaster rifle it's not cocked yet so we're safe, and move forwards and show you how this one works. We've got my elbow settled down on the ground and you can see now there's quite a lot of tension on this leather sling. As I come in for the shot, it's holding the rifle pretty steady. May not be steady enough for this shot, but I hope it is. Firing. Great shot. You can see it work. The reload, ready for the next shot. Firing. Well done. And on to it. It's a good position for the hill, out to about 200, 250 metres. I can recommend it. It's gone okay at that range, but how can we improve on that position? The answer is to actually, as we haven't got a bipod, very simply bring in our rucksack, our day bag, whatever it was we wandered up the hill with. I normally hunt or stalk with either a small rucksack or a little day bag like this. You can use this two ways. You can either go hand forwards and use this hand on the rifle. Don't have rounds in at the moment, but use this hand on the rifle. And you've got full control, you can move the shots fairly well. If you're coming up onto the target, squeeze and follow through. And then reload. Or, from this position, one can fully trust the bag to do the work at the front. And then, as with the bipod previously, this hand can default to the rear. And you actually come into this position. And you can see now, this is in fact very steady. And for longer shots, I can recommend this as a good one. And once again, sort the breathing out, focus, squeeze, reload in position. And you have most bases covered that way as well. Your choice of two very useful positions. Andrew, thank you. Okay. We hope you've learned something here today and that we've helped improve your shooting. In our next film, we're looking at distance shooting and how to take on targets at extended ranges.